I promised some people I would make a tutorial on how to do OpenAI plus, you know, neat. And uh, I, I know a couple other algorithms that work really well, like uh, uh, all the stuff from the uh, OpenAI baselines, like the DQNs and that crazy stuff. I'm going to start with neat, though, because I like neat. Neat works good. Okay, so uh, first things first. Can you guys see this? Should I zoom in on this a little bit? I'll zoom in. You, uh, there's a bunch of stuff you need. Uh, specifically, you should go to the GitHub repository for OpenAI and read the instructions there at the start. They're super handy. Uh, I'm going to show you what to do now. Basically, get your terminal open that you have Python installed in. Uh, you're going to want to make a new directory. I'm going to call mine tutorials because why the hell not? Uh, I personally like to use uh, Venv, the the Env virtual Env for my uh, Python project. So I'm going to do that right now. Uh, Python dash m Venv tutorials. Okay. CD tutorials. Source bin activate. So if you guys don't know about Vem, you can read it all on the Python documentation. It's just pretty handy. It's exactly that. You just make an environment in a folder, and then that folder has uh, only the packages that you want installed. So pip freeze shows nothing there. Um, after that, the source bin activate. Uh, you can see on the left there it says tutorial in brackets. That means that we're in the tutorial environment. This way, you know, you don't mix packages you can you can get you can use like uh, you can generate requirements.txt files it's it's the way to do it okay next um we're gonna on the actual web page for let me see if i can get the web page actually it might be helpful toolbars bookmarks tool done okay so you go to the uh open ai retro um, GitHub repository. It's up there. It's pretty easy to find. And uh, the I'm currently using the master branch. They keep a develop branch, but the master branch does everything we want right now. So we're just gonna just use that. Uh, you got to go down here. This is all the stuff it supports. Yay! They they support these other emulators, and they they offer like ways to import ROMs. I don't know the legality of that. So on this thing we're going to work with sonic because there's you can buy sonic on um on uh steam and then it's not a problem so that's that's how we're going to do this uh we don't we're not doing brew and we're not going to install from binary although i guess you can now we're going to do this stuff right here okay so let's do that right now copy past it bam Uh, if anyone's curious, I'm using KDE Desktop. That's where the desktop shortcuts work like that. Plasma Desktop. I don't know what it's called. Um, works great. Big fan. I uh, This is all Linux, by the way. You need uh, Python 3. Uh, I recommend Linux. I don't know how to do this in Windows. I assume it's the same, but I couldn't tell you. Mac, same same situation. I assume it's the same, but I, I don't... If it isn't the same, somebody tell me in the comments what the difference is, and I will uh, mention them next time. It's pretty exciting to watch things fill up, isn't it? Oh, you can see my path. Oh, my name's Lucas, by the way. That's me. Ooh, I saw Clang in there. Submodule tools Clang. Oh, we're done. Okay. So that was the first one. Second one here is this. Uh, and then uh, we're just going to this is kind of a long process so I may cut back afterwards unless I think of really fun stuff to talk about I was really happy when I got this to work actually I was uh, I was really I was inspired by um, Seth Bling's neat algorithm and uh, for the uh, FCE UX I uh, there's not a lot of great tasks TAS, Tool Assisted uh, Speedrun Emulators in Linux. You can do stuff in FCEUX on the uh, 
on the Linux version, but it's, I don't know, it feels kind of like clunky to me. I was using Wine and the Windows version of FCE, FCEUX. Uh, so when OpenAI released this stuff, I was so happy because I don't want to write in, I want to write it in Python. Uh, the, those emulators require, I can't say it, Lua, Lao, Loa, Loa scripting. Which is fine. It's fine. It's just not my preferred, right? Obviously, uh, Python's much better for. Okay, this looks like it's taking a while, so I may I may just cut back when it's done. Okay, we're done. So now we're gonna do this next little part here. Uh, it's not necessary because it should all be there, but I don't know. I just just like following rules. It's how I roll. Copying and pasting. Not understanding why. <laughs> There's a bunch of he, the, uh, the OpenAI project pulls from um, LibRetro and all these cores. Yeah, you can see them right there. They come from. You can find them in here somewhere. Uh, cores. See, they link. They link externally. So, like the Genesis, for example, is from Genesis Plus GX. Pretty cool. Then the NES, where's the NES come from? Yeah, Lib Retro, F C E U M M. Ooh. Uh, so they've written a bunch of like interface code. It's it's fantastic. They they did, I mean, if this is your hobby, like it's mine, they did us a tremendous favor. It's really very incredible. Uh, okay, so that's all done. We now need to what can i show you i guess i'll show you right away uh they've they've they got this like examples folder and in that they have a random agent right here let me open it up in the in the actual window mm -hmm. no one look at my stuff it's too cool don't look at it stop uh nope wrong place examples random agent so they, they've written us this little script here which uh, actually is everything you need to know to start running your own code on uh, gym stuff I'm going to t like go with you step by step in a later video the next video on how to implement your own a uh, specifically with the neat the Python neat library so we won't go into it too much but it's it's extremely handy to have this because it's very clear what needs to be done I'm going to attempt to run that. Uh, I'm not going to explain what I'm doing here. That, well, this is how you, they had like an arc parse there, so you just do this. Oh shit, I forget what it's called. Ooh, green hill zone act one. Act one. Oh, it's like, oh, did you, did, where's the ROM? Do you not have the ROM? You have to import the ROMs. So they, they've provided some tools to do that. They are in scripts, I believe. Yeah, so import, take a classics, import. So import is for, you know, if, if you've got the ROMs already legally somehow. I don't know how you would do that legally. <laughs> uh, but if you <laughs> want to import the that one, it's the, 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 the that. It's all just sort of built in. I'm, I'm going to run... Um, the uh, the the Sega Classics one there, which is just gonna pull it straight out of my uh, um, Steam, which is pretty cool. I think it's actually really straightforward. You just do this. You like my song? Of course you do. So you just run the script. It's going to ask you for your um, Steam username. You guys can all know that mine is Megapickles. <laughs> I'm not going to enter my password because I've already logged in before. And now we just wait. It will download the the um, the games from the from Steam. It's, a, it's kind of a hack. Not super sure I like logging into my Steam account with random software. But hey, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, so we're going to build, I know my video is for Donkey Kong Country, and we're going to build, um, I guess I can do it for Donkey Kong Country, I don't know, it feels wrong because I don't have, like I have I have a cartridge for it, I don't have a, yeah, <laughs> let's go, Steam, download, download, oh, it's done, 
Okay, so there you go. It says imported four games. So those are all available to us right now. So we're going to run the that was examples. What's in there? Random agent. Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. And then uh, Green Hill Zone Act 1. So when you call this script, you need to give it the game name as it's listed in there. And what the way it imports it and then they also have a bunch of um, they've pre-made I can just show you they've pre-made a bunch of uh, um, that's not it where is it where is it they've pre-made a bunch of data for us it's extremely cool what they've done because I guess they were trying to figure out what to do themselves Sounds like a fun place to work, to be honest. <laughs> Getting to write this stuff. So yeah, they've provided this. Um, they've provided this list here. So in the in the gym retro data, we've got contrib, experimental, and stable. Everything in stable you can call directly. So these are all just. If you have the ROMs for these, you can import them, and then that, then you can run the data in here. So let's go to Sonic. Sonic, 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 Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so yeah, you, here you go. You can see this. This is insanity. So they give these are the states. These are actual saved states at the beginning of each level, which you can load up to start your training on there. They provide these three file or four files. And a, this Lao script, Lua, Lua, I don't know how to say it. If anyone wants to say it, please tell me I'm I'm terrible. Uh, they provide this. Oh, what's this? Oh yeah, so that calls the loss. You, so you can write, I don't know, you can do all this loss scripting and it looks really powerful. I'm not doing any of it. It's much easier to just do in Python for me. So there's these files called scenario files. Uh, scenario files have conditions for when, all kinds of stuff, like what the reward is for every successful progression through the level the character makes. So as, for example, if you have the reward set to score, every time you get a new point, the, the uh, the output of the emulator is a reward of 10. I'll show you how it all works later, but it's pretty handy. Uh, let's see, data. These are all the bits or the bytes that you can, uh, if you guys have ever done any type of ROM hacking or um, uh, TAS stuff, um, these are the values, kind of like in the, you remember the Game Genie? If you like change, you can change a value and address in memory uh, and you can get like more lives or whatever. These are those values. So they have their specific things like the, the screen Y position, like Sonic's X position, Sonic's Y position, which zone you're in. And you can use that along with the scenario file to um, set up conditions for winning. So the AI will know when it's doing well. Bam. Uh, okay. So, now that we're done, we're going to run it. And you guys can watch what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so, the random agent does exactly what it says it does. It uh, makes Sonic move randomly. Uh, it doesn't learn anything. He just moves randomly. The uh, window that's open here, uh, it's all in fast forward, obviously, so that you can do more at a time. It's pretty cool. If he dies, I don't know how many times he has to die, but possibly if the time runs out, he will get a... Oh, there you go. It says right there. Got reward 100. Do you see that down here at the bottom? So, yeah. That's the random. Cool. I will... Uh, in the next episode, I will show you guys how to use this software to do neat. Cheers. Cheers.